Good morning. Yes, there. Good morning. So it's so good to join you again this morning. Um, God wants us to worship Him personally in our own personal closet, but He is also pleased and happy when we worship together. Amen? So there is this thing called corporate worship, that when we worship together, aren't you encouraged that you see your uh, fellow uh, brothers and sisters worshiping together? Amen, right? So God, um, you, you all look good in your praises. God, you, um, God is very pleased. So this, I have a question. This, if I can make this to work. Thank you. So there, all of us have 24 hours. Who among you wish that you have more? 25 hours. Yeah, I see the hand there. Who wish that you have lesser? 20 hours na lang, pwede na. Uh, maybe none, right? So sometimes, time runs so fast, or most of the time, um, especially when you're having fun, di ba? But, Sometimes, time runs so slow, boring naman, kaya antagal naman ang oras, right? So, there's another way to look at time. There's this past and the future. For the, for the English speakers, those who speak English, the past is behind you, right? The future is in front of you. The same with Spanish and Tagalog, right? Nakaraan na. Sa likod yun eh, right? Kinabukasan. It's in front. But are you aware that for Mandarin Chinese, it's the opposite? Are you? Yes. <laughs> Franklin is nodding his head. He knows that. Because for the Chinese Mandarin, the past is in front of you. Huh? Right. Yeah. Ting dit. It's qian tian. It's the day uh, before yesterday. But it's in front of you. But for the future, it's behind you. So, uh, Ho Tien, right? The day uh, after tomorrow, Ho Tien. But it's behind you. So why? So could it be that um, the way we look at things may be different from others and it affects our language? But at the same time, our language may also affect how we see, see things. Time is relative. Very relative. Because for some, it's fast. Some, it's slow. Some, it's behind you. Some, it's ahead of you. So, maybe the Chinese said, you know the past. That's in front of you. How do you know the future? That's why it's behind you. And you learn from your past, which is in front of you. Anyway, for the, in, the, in the New Testament, as well as the Old Testament, there's a way to look at time. Uh, can you read to, together from Ephesians 5, 15 to 17? Let's read together, please. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Take note of the middle part, making the most of every opportunity. In the, new, in the King James Version, it says, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time, what does it mean? Because when we say redeem, it's something that was lost and you take it back. Pero time, time, can you, it's lost already. Can you bring it back? Yesterday, can you bring... No, right? So maybe the redeem here can also mean compensate. Yes, you lost it, but you can still make it up. Compensate it with another thing, right? So but before we continue, let's open with a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for giving us 24 hours a day. Thank you, Lord, that each of us are given this gift but help us to be accountable, help us to make the full use of our time, help us to live wisely, Lord God. But we need your wisdom, we need your strength, Lord God. So Lord, we submit to you this morning, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So let's look at the first one, be careful then how you live. Um, let me tell you a story. 
um, more than 50 years ago, tagal na, some of you were not born or most of you, um, there was this family of six families and they have their own families na. They have their own kids. So some have seven kids, some have five kids, some have three kids, and some have one kid. But every Sunday yan, they meet together for a fellowship, uh, for, for fun, for, for reunion. So the adults, they will play mahjong regularly. For the kids, they will play, wow, in the playground, all kinds of games. And in the uh, 1960s, 70s, do you know what games they play? Do you know um, Patintero? Who knows that? No, right? <laughs> oh, yes, some of you. <laughs> uh, touch Taya, yeah, when I touch you, yeah. Hide and seek, right? Touch the color, Oh, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, yes. So, um, uh, Chinese garter. So, so, all kinds of games. They, the kids really enjoyed it. One time, there's a college student, the cousins, no? One of them, that, one of the elder one, she became a Christian. She's in a college. Uh, she's a college student. And she's so excited. So, uh, she attended the church alone. And she went home and, start, and stood beside the majong table while the aunties, uncles, and her parents were, were playing, and he started, she started to share the good news. She started to share the gospel every week, you know. And, but the parents, you know, they just play mahjong. You know, we call it swimming. So uh, I'm not aware if they play for money or not. But <laughs> it's no fun now if there's no money involved in the gambling. So anyway, until one Sunday, the, the parents and aunties, they got so tired na, irrit, irritated na. Hey, quiet na. You can just go get all your cousins and bring them to church. Basta leave us alone. We play the mahjong, you bring the cousins. So, more than 50 years ago, I was included in one of the cousins. And I was invited to go to church. So let me share to you quickly uh, my, my, a little of my journey uh, in, in my uh, missionary journey. I want to share it to you quickly. So I was able to join uh, Sunday school. I was four years old. So my siblings, also my cousins, they all joined us. My first uh, Sunday, school, Sunday school teacher was Ati Helen, the ex- exact cousin who shared the gospel to my family. So she was my first Sunday school teacher. And I also want to acknowledge another special Sunday school teacher. She's here right now. Sister Elena Uy. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> so, yes, um, you can ask her and she will tell you that I'm the most behaved student. No, actually, it's the opposite. Many years later, I saw her and she said, Marlene, nangunguna ka sa kalokohan, no? Hanggang ngayon pa ba? So, so the, yeah, I'm very naughty. So, Sunday school teachers, please be patient with your students, right? So, God sent you here for, for a purpose, so be, be kind. So, I'm glad. Sister Elena was so patient with me. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for investing on my life. Thank you, Sister Elena. So, uh, along the way, sometime I accepted Christ. Pero some, I was thinking, I think I accepted Christ a number of times, right? Anyone say, oh, come, who wants to accept Christ? Me, me, all the time. Who has experienced that? More than one time, right? So, but there was a point I realized, yes, God loves me not because of what I did, not because I love Him, but he saved me because he loves me. So in that way, no, I don't need to work hard for my salvation because it's a free gift. It's by his grace. That's why I said, okay, I'll decide it. And I decided to go for water baptism at the age of 11. So praise God. Look at these angels here. Um, it's really an exciting event in your life. I know it doesn't change you overnight. It doesn't mean, oh, holy ka na. People might kiss you. That you're, of course not. You are already saved by God's grace, no matter what you did or did not do. But it's a testimony. It's a public a declaration and celebration. Yes, I belong to Christ. Yes, I am saved. Not by my works, not because I'm good, 
or, or not naughty or what, but because of God's grace. Amen. So we rejoice with them. So that, that was, I, I was baptized on a New Year's Eve. We have this watch night service. Midnight, we meet together, you know, and uh, celebrate the new year. That time, wala pang traffic and everything is still okay. But right now, it's not safe to go out. But we celebrate and I was baptized and we rejoice together on New Year's Day. So that was um, when I was 12. So that was 1975. There, I revealed my age. Yeah, I'm a senior now. <laughs> it's okay. So I really enjoyed my time as a youth. So I joined the weekly Christ Ambassadors. Who, who experienced that on a Saturday night? Yes, we even sing, sang, right? We are Christ Ambassadors. Yes, there. But I won't sing anymore. So that's our theme song. Yes, Sister Beth and Sylvia. Um, and I look forward to youth retreat. Do you enjoy youth retreats? Uh, the, yeah, we, we only have that once a year. I think around December. So I always look forward to that. There was one speaker one time, uh, Pastor Irvin Rutherford. I still remember his name. He was, he was preaching on a, sun, uh, on a evening rally. And then she just mentioned, uh, many of you don't feel uh, good about yourself. You think that you are not adequate, that you feel rejected. So at that time, I was exactly, it's exactly my prayer. Lord, I want to serve you. Because if you are real, I want to serve you my whole life, right? If you're not that real in my life, what's the point, right? I can do everything. I can earn. I can uh, live a comfortable life, right? But if you're real, what's my purpose here? But Lord, I don't feel adequate. I don't think I can do anything. I'm so shy. You don't believe, right? I'm very shy, talaga. So, <laughs> uh, I know. I <laughs> my, my sister can affirm, although she's laughing now. So, um, but... I was reading the scripture later on, and I, uh, I, I was looking at Isaiah. So I, I suddenly was uh, stopped by this passage. I took you from the ends of the earth. I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So some of you right now may feel rejected that you don't have any gifts or any talents. God has not rejected you. It takes his work on the cross, a sacrifice on the cross 2,000 years ago for us to be delivered. You are worth it. Of course you are worth it. It's worth everything, his work on the cross. So, if you feel rejected, so the time said, Sige na nga, Lord, I know you have not rejected me, but I don't feel like it. So, God help me and remove the fear. And sometime later also, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit with uh, manifestation of speaking in tongues. I'm not in a youth group, although every youth retreat I will seek the baptism, but I was alone. No one praying for me, but I said, Lord, I, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I began to speak in tongues. So God is ready anytime. Jesus is ready to baptize you. You don't need to feel it or be in a group setting. No, you pray and God will, but Jesus, yeah, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Number two, how do you live? Not as unwise, but as wise. Who wants to be wise? Of course, right? We want to do everything wisely so that we will not be foolish. In the Old Testament, the same thing. So teach us to number our days so that we may get a heart of wisdom. That was in Psalms 90 verse 12. It was said to be written by Moses. Yeah, very Old Testament. So Moses. Uh, yes, I, I took up, in my, in my college years, I took up accounting, accountancy. I don't like this subject. It's so boring, right? Uh, Ketel, where are you? So, <laughs> so but my, par my, my father was a frustrated accountant, so I was asked to take up accounting. It was a four-year, uh, sorry, five-year course, business management, admin, administration, and accountancy. On my fourth year, I got so tired. You know, the debit, credit, I got so tired. So 
I had an idea. I can graduate in four years actually with just a degree instead of the double degree of accountancy. So I can just get business admin. But I talked with my pastor and the pastor said, no, just finish it. Because your dad wants you to do it, your uncle wants you to do it, just go for it. So thank God I did it by his grace. And I took up the accountancy exam, uh, board exam to get a license. I'll tell you later why this is important. Yeah. So I graduated and uh, that time I said, Lord, if you want me for full time or to work for you, uh, to serve you, I will do it. So, but then after graduation, I'm so excited, I took a job. It, this was in um, uh, Computer Information Systems, a sister company of Meralco. So there, I was a trainee. I had a two-year contract. Um, this two-year contract, they will train me for two years. If I leave before two years, I have to pay 20,000 pesos. And that was in 1986. You know, and where do I get the money in case I didn't finish the contract? And in fact, you know my, what my allowance, it's an allowance, not a salary, every month. 1986, not much. It's 1,200 pesos a month. I wish it's a week or what, but it's a month. 1,200 pesos, that's my allowance, nothing else. So I am stuck there. But it's, it's a nice job. Because the training there, we get to uh, write your electric bills. Do you know that? If you know me by then, you can pay me a large amount. I can fix your electric bill. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, we just generate the bill and we didn't get, get the input. So, there was a call to be a missionary to China during that time. A lady missionary. So, I know already the pastor knows that I'm the one who should go. Because I got the training and everything. But... I said, oh, in my heart, thank God, I, I signed a two-year contract. I don't need to go now. You know? So um, I was safe then. But guess what? Six months later, I was enjoying myself. The company, we call it CIS, Computer Information, suddenly closed shop, closed down, and merged with Meralco. So, I still have a job, but the contract will be cancelled, rescinded. And we are uh, supposed to sign another contract for the one and a half years remaining. Uh-oh, now I have a choice, right? So, in honor, I want to honor God. So, I said, this is the way that I prayed, you know, Lord, I don't want to pay. I cannot pay 20000 You provide. Sure enough, I don't need to pay 20000 and I can leave. So that's what happened. Out of 1,000 plus employees, I was the only one who did not sign the contract. So I cannot disobey God anymore. So at first, I don't want to go to China. But later on, I really enjoyed it. I don't want to come back. Because there's so many open doors. And um, God has really uh, blessed that ministry there. I, I enjoyed it my, uh, very much. Number three. So I'm still learning how to live wisely even though I, I disobeyed many times, but God is good, God is gracious. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. That's the main theme. So during that time, there were many questions. The, the, you know, the student, Chinese communist students, they have so many questions. And um, most often, I don't know the answer. So that's me in the middle. I don't know how to answer them. In fact, during the time, the questions are not so complicated. Do you know that? Um, like, um, okay lang ba mag body piercing? Or is it okay to do tattoo? These are old questions that, you know, there are so many books on it and answers. But um, how about, um, how do I know I'm, I'm saved? Or how do I know, you know, that... or how can I be a Christian in a communist country? So, so many questions that at uh, that time, I don't know how to answer. And, also, and right now, even more complicated, right? Uh, Pastora, can LGBTQ go to heaven? How do you answer that, right? Or, oh, uh, I want to, uh, we will get married, but we're LGBTQ. Can I, when we get married? Or as a pastor, can you have an LGBTQ pastor? 
Is it okay, Pastor James? So, <laughs> uh, so, so many questions now. And it's really a, 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 a problem among the Christian churches right now. They are encountering this. So I decided it's about time I need to go for training. So during those years, 1990s, I went for BBC, Bethel Bible College night classes, um, and, and also APTS, Asia Pacific Theological Seminary for Masteral. But guess what? I realized that, that, yes, there, you can do it, come on. <laughs> uh, there, thank you. The more I learn, the less I know. Do you feel that way? Even in your school, right? You're studying. The more I learn, the less I know. Same with Bible school. Yes, Sister Anita, you're nodding. She went for Bible school as well. So, the, uh, it, it's difficult because it's still questions and issues that were being, uh, it's a struggle for all and being sorted out. And we have to have on-the-spot training. Do you know that? We have to go for, uh, I went for this mountain trip in Benguet for one week. It was so cold then. I, I, catch, I, I catch a bug. So I, I really had a difficult time. But during that time, our, our leader, Dr. Won Sukma, he said, okay, um, he will assign on the spot. So tonight, we will have a crusade. We will have the village people come from all over, and you will preach, you know, and then you will take charge of worship. And then he asked, yeah, she told, he told me, Marlene, you'll do the testimony for that evening. And I was so scared, you know, so I have to prepare, prepare, prepare. But there's no point in writing down, do you know why? Because during that night, it's evening, it's in the village, you know, um, and no lights, they will just bring a torch or a, a candle. You can see them carrying that candle, going down the mountain, all the way to the courtyard of the brother whose house he, is, he was opening up for our meeting. And, of course, I was asked to give a testimony with an Ilocano interpreter. He will, trans, he will translate from my English to Ilocano. No lights at all, so no use to write anything right. So even though I have Codigo, no. So guess what? After two sentences, I stopped. I don't know what to say. I was um, mental block. I had stage fright. But praise God, because earlier on, my interpreter and I got to talk. We chatted. So I told, told him a little of my testimony. So thank God, he just continued my testimony for me. <laughs> so I hope right now I have a tra translator who can continue my, trans my sermon for me. But as of now, <laughs> so um, in whatever weaknesses you have, God will use you. Don't, don't, don't worry uh, like me. Don't, don't worry. But um, just be a willing vessel and God will open doors for you. Ah, the problem right now is truly the days are evil. Yes, we have, um, we have false teachers, we have false prophets, we have false brothers and sisters. Those are the wolves in sheep's clothing. At least you can discern, or I hope you can, you know, oh, this sister is so weird, huh? Why does he talk about, you know, the Bible he twisted, at least. But the real problem actually are wolves in shepherd's clothing, correct? Because these are leaders already. These are pastors, and they're teaching false teachers. That's why they are my pastor, and then they will teach false. So, so we were invaded also in the 1980s, 90s by false teachers and pro who claim to be prophets. So I went in my study, in my seminary uh, study, I realized whatever they teach, nothing is new. It's al already in the Bible. Uh, sorry, uh, it's already <laughs> written that it's there, the Bible is against it. But throughout history, right now we have uh, Reverend uh, Ed Lapis talking about suddenly about Martianism. I don't know if you know him. Very famous uh, FEBC DCAS uh, speaker every every day, day by day. But suddenly he thought about 
Martian, you know, the, the God of the Old Testament is different from the New Testament. Where did he get that? It's nothing new. In the, in the early centuries of um, history, they already thought about this uh, false teaching. There's one more that we, the, the, the false teachers that we had here in this church, they said that Christians can have demons. Do you accept that? Uh, thank God. No, of course not, right? What's the point, right? You are saved by grace. Christ lives and dwells in you. So, you, you, you know, they ask us to, you know, we tend to live in fear. We have demons, so we have to cast it out. So when are you totally free, right? So, no. Another one that they taught is using this verse. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. They use this verse. Um, this is a greeting, diba? Right? When you write a letter, dear, okay, you miss your, your mommy or daddy. Dear dad. Give me money. Of course not, right? What kind of child? You have to say, I hope you are well. I hope the family is well, right? Greeting first. So that's exactly a greeting, right? Beloved, I pray. So they use this, that you prosper, that you become rich there, and be in health. So when you are in health, you cannot get sick now. That means you are disobeying because sickness is of the devil and all sicknesses are caused by sin. So, uh, one more there. Lack of faith. You know, there's a, there's a teenager. He had leukemia during that time, 1980s. 12 years old, leukemia. And this, these false teachers kept on saying, you, you are sick because you have sin in your life and you lack faith. And guess what? He died this teenager died thinking that he's so full of sin that God doesn't want to heal him and that he lacks faith. It's so sad. That is false teaching. In fact, one more thing that they taught us is there. Moses lived until 120 years old. That's why if you live 100, until 119 and uh, 11 months, you're not obeying God. Because you're supposed to live 120 years old. That's the most ridiculous, I think. So there's no such thing. So that's what they taught, actually. You cannot get sick. Another bad, really terrible thing that they taught us is the prosperity gospel. Very abused and misused. They used this verse to say that, see, when you name it, you claim it, you can take it. I was riding uh, with a sister who was driving. And you know the... The street in Manila, diba? Full of puddle. We call it uh, Moon Nila. It's just like a moon. Lubak, lubak, right? And then while driving, pack, pack. And then suddenly she shouted, Lord, fix the road. See? <laughs> he, like a genie, right? He, he considered God as a genie. Whatever you command, I have faith naman eh. Lord, fix the road. That's ridiculous, right? So, uh, shortly, let me teach you what does the Bible say. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And whoever uh, sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work as it is written. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor and their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So they use this uh, verse, remember, who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And God will be, uh, God will bless you abundantly. So tama naman. When you give, you will receive. That's what they teach. When you give, you will say, it is biblical. Correct? Because they will say, oh, you give me. Uh, you give because God wants you to give and you will be blessed. See, you look at me, I give. That's why I have a $10 million mansion. 
Because I give. So that's what you do. Um, and the verse says reaping and sowing. So whatever you sow, you sow one dollar or one peso, you will get ten pesos. So you want more? You give. You give your whole bank account. You will have more. That is what the, the, the prosperity gospel. And actually, parang may tama naman, di ba? It's, it's, a, it's correct. So this prosperity gospel says, you reap what you sow. But there, but it's, it's not it. It's not the complete picture as we have read. Bec- uh, and then, unfortunately, okay, unfortunately, sometimes we went to the other pendulum. Parang pendulum yan, extreme. You give, you will have more. The other side naman, no. When you give money, let's say 10 pesos, you will receive more of Hope, love, peace, joy, and everything good. So all the abstract. But no, also, the Bible doesn't say that. Because whatever you sow, you will reap. So if you sow, um, let's say, hatred, you will reap disunity. When you sow anger and, uh, and any sin, you will reap corruption. But if you sow goodness, you will receive goodness even more. You sow money you will also receive more. That's what the verse said, right? God will bless you abundantly. The key there actually is in verse 11. You will be enriched in every way so that what? Exactly. There is a purpose. You give, God will supply you more, definitely. But not for you to buy and be entitled to get a Ferrari or a Mustang or whatever car you want. It's Yes, you can buy it, of course. God bless you for that. But the purpose of God increasing is for you to be even more generous. And if you are generous, you give more, you will receive even more. What for? So that you can be even more generous. That's why you observe our, our, our friends here. Very generous, but they never run out, right? Because God blessed them even more, and all the more they are even more generous. So, so there. So here I want to express my thanks. Thank you for being generous in uh, helping me. I didn't have any salary at all for 14 years, but God is good. Thank you for being a part of um, blessing me all these 14 years. Amen. So there. In short, how do you spot false teachers and false prophets and false brothers and sisters? There's this, um, they, they, there was this bank somewhere there, Banco. They train their tellers. They train them for one month. And all they do to spot, uh, in order to know ano yung fake, ano yung ano, real money, for one month, all they touch were real money. Walang fake. Real dollars, real pesos, real yen, and all those for one month. And then they are officially tellers, and they do a good job. Why? Because they think that if you are touching the real one, once someone deposits a fake one, they will easily catch it. They will know just by the look, just by maybe smell or what. They know already fake yen. So how do we know if a teacher is telling the false, uh, giving a false teacher, a false teaching, or you know, uh, bad teaching for that matter? How? By knowing the truth, knowing the word of God. If you know God's word, then anyone who preaches to you or teaches you, parang mali ah. You search again because you know the truth. All right? So, because you cannot go for each false teaching and say, although you can research, nothing new under the sun. So, lastly, truly the days are evil. Lastly, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now that you know what is the right thing to do and not, uh, not waste time, do not be foolish. So, um, after my study, 
in the year 2000, there was an, a, an open door to go to China. I know the pastor here doesn't want me to leave, but I realized I had to go. I had to go because I know that there are many hungry people and there. That's why I said it's important to, in case, finish your studies, college student, finish it. Because because of my degree and me, my license, I was granted a Chinese visa. Because during that time, you have to prove to them, why are we hiring a local? Uh, why are we hiring a foreigner? Because I'm a foreigner, foreigner there. You have to prove that I have something over and above the local. So thank God, I got a 10-year visa, 10 years. So I was able to stay there. And this is not to put anyone down, because during the 1990s, I was pastoring here for 12 years. And I hold Bible uh, Sunday school class for adults. And don't worry, these are not you. No more here. And I have about 10 students, but only one will come. And this person coming will be late pa. So I said, Lord, you know, we have everything here. We have all the Bibles available. I think I need to go somewhere where they want to hear the gospel. So I went to China. And sure enough, I hold Bible studies at night in my house. Because they are factory workers. They, are, they have jobs, you know. Seven o'clock at night, they will come to my house. And I will teach them, you know, we'll discuss the Bible. We will go until nine o'clock, two hours. More than enough na yan, right? So I said, you go home. Because they have families, they have kids. Eh. Some have babies pa nga. And you know what they said? No, teacher, we want to hear more. So, it was so opposite. So, so uh, I know that that's the time. You know, so much hunger. And uh, unfortunately, after 10 years, I can no longer have any visa there. So, I have to go back. But uh, I was, uh, there was an open door to Asia Pacific Theological Seminary. And I was thinking, this, they have students from all over the uh, maybe world, most of them, Asia, uh, South, uh, Southern Oceania, and um, um, uh, yeah, Southeast Asia. So, I, uh, these are pastors already. So I was thinking, yes, and this, some many Chinese also, I cannot go to China, I cannot go anywhere, but at least if I teach them, they can go back to serve their own people. So praise God for this opportunity. So I was able to to, this will be my 14th year. When I was studying there, 1990s, there's a professor, Dr. Jack Russell. I'm closing soon. Jack Russell, he, he told us, um, 10 of us students, 10 students, he said, according to statistics, half of you will not make it. And these are training for pastors, you know, and leaders and missionaries, all of us. And we're supposed to be matured, Christian, already water baptized, you know, and uh, studying already, but statistically, half of you will not make it. So that's my warning also for my students. According to statistics, half of you cannot make it. And sure enough, when you read the papers, the social media, almost every week, it's weekly, there will be pastors who fall. And some other pastors that we did not even hear about, Somewhere down there in Manila, uh, in Mindanao, I heard there's this uh, group of young people. Almost all of them were sexually abused by their pastors. It's terrible. So, um, and then, of course, we hear of the famous ones like Rabbi Sakarayas. So much following, millions. Already, uh, he committed sexual immorality while doing those ministries. And of course, the latest, uh, Bill Heibel of IHOP, I International House of Prayer, so sad, millions of following. But uh, he's, he, he has been abusing uh, minors, oh, minors also, minor women, uh, when, when he was still young. So it's very sad. So leaders fall away. But how much more? All of us. Right? So... That's why there's this warning in these verses. Live your life fully. So number one summary, don't forget your intimacy with God. God wants you to, to be intimate, intimate with Him. Yes, we as a church, right? We want efficiency, but God desires intimacy. Amen. So there's this violinist, he said, famous one, very accomplished one. He said, if I don't practice violin, one day I know it. 
Two days, the critics know it. Three days, the public knows it. The same with our time with God, our intimacy with God. If I don't spend time in communion with God, I will know it. For two days, if I didn't spend time with my communion with God, your family and friends will know it. The third, for three days, if you didn't stop, if you stop having fellowship with God, praying and, and confession and uh, uh, asking for his help, everyone knows it. The whole church knows it. Of course, that's exaggerate. We may not know it until everything is falling down because everything starts small. It doesn't, you know, oh, I watch pornography tonight, tomorrow I fall. No, it's something that will keep on adding and building up and suddenly you realize you're so far from God. There's this pastor who uh, has, uh, Pastor Kevin Donaldson, he was our speaker. He has this um, very good friend close friend who is a pastor, he fell. He engaged in immorality, immoral uh, immoral practice. And this is what he said. You know, Kevin, I still love God. I love God very much. But I stopped having the fear of God. I stopped fearing God. It's important. May, May takot tayo sa Diyos. If you fear Him, you know, it's not the scary fear, no. It's something that you will not do to displease God. You will do everything to honor God. Right? So number two, uh, summary, live wisely. Don't waste your time. Now is the time to be baptized in water. Now is the time to learn about God and live fully for Him. Number three, these are evil times. Don't, do not be foolish. Live wisely. Make the most, redeem the time because the days are evil and it will get worse and worse. Promise. It's getting worse and worse. Like what Sister Gina just prayed right now. The world is chaotic and it will be even more. Understand the Lord's will. How do you know the Lord's will? Word of God. And don't forget, that's why... Thank you for, for helping me, Lance, with this and the worship thing. You did a great job, great commission. We are part. That's, what is your purpose here? Just to learn God, the word of God? No. We are to go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of God, teaching them everything. That's why this is a very good uh, motto here. We have power. God will give you power if you ask from him. And the love, it has to come from God. Love for the 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 unsaved one, your loved ones, where will they go if they don't know him? How do they live right now? Lost, without purpose. They need God. But what do you need to do? You have to have self-discipline. Let's pray together. I will address three kinds of people. Number one are those who uh, haven't accepted Christ yet. Now is the time. The days are evil. Now is the time. You don't feel like it, but God has chosen you to be here. Accept him. Number two, for those who are lacking self-discipline, you know, just like the violinist, you are not practicing for one or two days. Come to him. Come back to him. And number three, for all of us, Lord, we need your self-discipline to be able to check ourselves, have intimacy with you, and have fear of you, and go and make disciples because the days are evil. Thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your desire that we come before you, be intimate with you. Lord, help us not to neglect our special time in our prayer closet, that just the, the, the us both, Lord, that I can pour out my heart, my life for you, Lord God, and all my worries and sorrows, Lord. Only you understand, Lord God. And also, I pray for those who um, need to accept you and, under, and understand you finally, Lord, 
right now. Now is a day that salvation will come to these friends that we have. And also for all of us, help us to live wisely. Help us to redeem the time while there is time because we know the days are very, very evil. So help us to go and make disciples. Help us to be brave. If not for my cousin who is brave enough to to share the gospel. I don't know where I'll be right now. Help us, Lord, to look back to those people who shared the gospel to us, Lord, that we will also do likewise. Thank you, Lord, for seeking what was lost. We give you all glory and all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.